It is a Joe show, and it's a family Friday today. My mom joins the program. Good morning, Mom. Good morning. How is the weather up in uh, the north woods of Wisconsin this morning? It's moderating. It is. It's, it's trending. moderating. Trending upwards as well. Will you be going out in a T-shirt and shorts on Sunday as much of Iowa is planning on doing? Well, actually, Monday now is, is looking like the better day for that. Yeah, you know, I looked ahead at the forecast, and it's supposed to get up above 30 on um, Monday. Yep. Mm-hmm. But no, T-shirt and shorts, probably not. No. Okay. Long sleeve shirt with no jacket. Yeah, that, yeah that I could do. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, much of the country this past week has been dealing with uh, crazy freezing and snow where it's not supposed to snow. And I want to know, uh, it got really cold where you were at. How, how cold did it get uh, up in northern Wisconsin? I think the coldest that I actually saw was minus 36 air temperature or wind wind chill oh no it's air temperature minus yeah. 36 yeah holy cow what is the worst winter storm you've ever been through because you know you've been around a while i'm not going to say a long time but you've been around a while <laughs> what is yeah, what, yeah. what is the worst storm that you ever experienced and was it on the farm growing up you know the worst storm that i can remember uh, clearly remember actually was not while I was growing up. It was in 1985 and, um, it was the, the day that, uh, my dad died Oh, and mom and I had, had driven down. To, <clears throat> it's a long story and I'll cut it short. He, he was taken by ambulance, um, from Spooner to Rice Lake and from Rice Lake to Eau Claire. And so we were hightailing it down to Eau Claire and, um, after he died, on our way home, we we drove into the worst storm I've ever seen. I mean, literally, you could not see your hand in front of your face. Um, the windshield wipers couldn't keep up with the snow, and I was terrified that you know it's a <clears throat> it's a two hour uh, normally a two hour drive home from Eau Claire, and it took I don't know how many hours. To, four, five, six, it's hard to say. And I was terrified we were going to go into the ditch, but um, his his spirit was sitting on the front of the car and kept us safe. Oh, wow. Where was I? Um, you were in, in the cities. You were with a friend. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That uh, that took a turn that I did not expect on that story there, Mom. <laughs> yeah, well, it... It was the worst one I could think of Holy God. for a number of reasons. Well, I guess I asked, what's the worst storm? That's that's what you get when you ask a question like that. <laughs> yeah. Asking yeah. you shall receive, just like that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that would outdo the uh, the blizzard of 91 or, you know, any of the other storms that I was alive for. Well, yeah, the blizzard of 91, that was a big one. We lived in the cities, and the snow just kept a coming and a coming and a coming. But and we didn't have anywhere to go, we- so it didn't matter. Well, I needed to try to get to work, but oh. but yeah, I didn't have anywhere and to you, go. <laughs> you needed to go trick or treating, yeah. so I mean, you know, pick your priorities. <laughs> uh, Mom, coming up, we're going to play uh, "Say It or Sing It." You know how the game is played. You're a long time listener and uh, not a first time caller. <laughs> um, uh, we have a category. We have ten answers. <laughs> we take turns guessing. Loser sings the song. Uh, we'll play "Say It or Sing It" next. Oh, by the way, uh, um, your category, Mom. Yeah. No tongues. Yeah. No tongues. I'm sorry, no tongues? No tongues, as in uh, the thing in your mouth. No tongue. Theater no singing. No tongues. Next. Ooh. Ba, 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 baran. So, okay. All right. Um, yeah. Your, your okay. category here, you have 30 seconds uh, to name, no tongues is category, 30 seconds to name 10 places and events that require quiet. 10 places or things where you must be quiet. You ready? Alrighty. Here we go. Thirty seconds. Okay, church, uh, library, um, uh, during a concert, uh, during plays, uh, during movies. Uh, ooh, I'm running out of ideas. Concert, plays, movies, church, synagogues, um, probably mosques, um, in a hospital. Um, hmm. That is time. That That's is time. You got four rights. 
four rights. Okay. You got library. Okay. You got at a movie. You got uh, classical concerts and religious service are the ones you got right. Places, events that require you okay. to be quiet. You missed a uh, school test. No talking. Oh, yeah. You missed uh, at a funeral. Uh, oh, yeah. On yeah. a film set. You know, quiet on the set. We're going to roll. Uh, uh, okay. At a museum, on a golf course, and at Wimbledon are the uh, six that you missed. <laughs> okay. Well. Because well, you're so familiar with rightly Wimbledon. Rightly so. Yeah. So there you yes. go. You got four. You got four. Uh, what's my category? Your category is it's always there even though you can't always see it. Always there even though you can't always see it. Zader Sing It Round 2 is next on The Joe Show. It's always there even though you can't always see it. It's always there even though you can't always see it. Okay, what uh, what am I trying to guess here? You are trying to guess traditional full moon names. Traditional full moon names? Yeah. Oh, oh, I guess that makes sense, because it's always a full moon. Uh, sometimes the earth's in the way. Okay. 30 seconds on the clock. We're going to go with a harvest moon, a blood moon, a uh, farmer's moon, a farmer's only moon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some other moons here. What? A, uh, we got a wolf moon, a blue moon. Uh, what other moons are there? Uh, a howler's moon. A new moon, uh, a half a moon. Jeez, uh, <laughs> Louise, I can't even think. I think I got some. I had to have gotten a couple. Where Did are we you at? Time up? Yeah, yeah, my time. Oh, yeah, time's up. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, of, of the list that I have, you got two. Two? Aw. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you had, you had some really good answers, but they weren't on my list. Oh, that's, that's how it I works. Okay. I didn't make this list. I found this list. Okay. So, <clears throat> and and there are actually more than 10. So, you, you know, there were 12 that you could have picked from. Okay. So, January is the wolf moon. You got that one. Okay. Um, September or October is the harvest moon. Got so that So, you got one. that one. Yep. Um, my list also showed two other names for the harvest moon, full corn moon and hunter's moon. Didn't and I say February, hunter? Um... Yeah, whatever. It doesn't I heard matter. Farmer. Yeah, but yeah. well, I'll, I'll give you that one. Okay, okay. now you got three. Okay, Still so lost. in February, in February it's the snow moon. In March it's the worm moon. Oh, weird. In April it's the pink moon. In May it's the flower moon. In June it's the strawberry moon. In July it's the buck moon. In August it's the sturgeon moon. In November, it's a beaver moon, and in December, it's a cold moon. Cold moon. You know, they really missed the boat on, <laughs> on having a June moon. They should have just called it a June moon. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it just flows. It's much better that way. All right, uh, bringing me back to uh, the days of, was I in a child <laughs> safety seat growing up singing this song, Mom? Or did we not have child safety um, seats? There was no such an animal. No. Okay. <laughs> I was just rolling around the back seat. Um, all right. Beach Boys. No, actually, you were rolling around in the front seat. <laughs> the front seat, not strapped into anything. The 80s were an amazing time to make it out of. All right. Ba, 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 Baran. Ba, 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 Baran. Barbara Ann, take my hand. Barbara Ann, you got me rocking and a rolling, rocking and a reeling. Ba, Baran, ba, 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 Baran. Yay! <laughs> There we you know, have it. You know where we you know where we actually used to sing that the most? I do not. In the bathtub. In the bathtub. Well, <laughs> there's a there's a visual for everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a whole nother hour to go. Holy cow. Uh Feel Good Friday is next on the Joe Show after nine. Uh do you got anything uh, that you're excited about for this weekend? Actually I do. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and and the deal is, you know, we're getting out of the deep freeze up here. It was zero this morning, and it's supposed to get up around 12 later today. Woo! And later today, we are getting a new freezer. A new so freezer? out of the deep freeze and into a freezer. Well, not into a freezer, but getting a freezer. Yeah. What the do you old know? one is on its last leg, and so we ordered a new one, and it's taken about a month for it to get here, and they're delivering it later today. Oh, there we go. That's exciting. 
when you're retired, yeah. you know, you get you get the excitement of a new freezer coming in. <laughs> It, you know, it's small pleasures. Small now, pleasures. I got a question for you. Uh, is the old deep freeze full of food? Yes. Okay. And Are you going the- to be sorting out all of the food and, like, throwing away the stuff that's, like, 10 years old? Or are you just going to move all of it into the new deep freeze? Uh, there will be some sorting that will, will occur, yes. <laughs> You're not going to just... We're going <laughs> to... We're going to take everything, and it's going to get separated into this is chicken, this is pork, this is beef, this is God only knows what, and the God only knows what is probably going to get tossed, and the rest of it's going to get repacked into the new freezer in a way that makes it readily evident what's what's there, so you're not having to dig and you know I know there's chicken in here somewhere. If you had to guess, how many ice cream pails with Sharpie written on the cover do you have in your deep freeze? Oh, only one. Oh, well, you you and know, it's, and it's got ice cream in it. Oh, okay, even better then. <laughs> Not mystery meats. Awesome. Uh, feel good Friday. Uh, send in uh, a message to the Star One Six Facebook page. Let us know what's uh, making you feel good heading into this weekend. Up next, Mom, we're going to play a game. It's called Cameo High Low, and that is next here on the Joe Show. <laughs> Family Friday, Joe Show on Star 106. My mother is here. Uh, Mom, have you ever heard of Cameo? Cameo? Like a Cameo appearance? Uh, Yeah, in a way, in a way. Uh, Cameo is an app, is a service, a platform where uh, you can pay to have famous people uh, record a video and send it to you or send it to a friend. So, like, if your friend is a a big fan of uh, Don Johnson from Miami Vice... I don't know why I picked that for a okay. reference. Uh, you can pay Don Johnson, pay Cameo, to have Don Johnson be like, happy birthday, so-and-so, I'm not wearing socks. You know, and, and that's the deal. So, okay. I'm going to play a clip of, uh, of, I think I have five different uh, celebrities here, and what I want you to do is guess how much it costs to have this celebrity send a message, Okay. Okay. All right. First up, Steve Harvey. Hey, look, I'm Steve Harvey, and I want to congratulate some of you team members over at Ernest, okay? Steve Harvey, very busy man, very busy with his shows and his different things and his mustache routine. How much do you think it costs (laughs) to have Steve Harvey send a cameo? I would guess around $1,000. Ooh, that's a little high. A little high. Uh, Actually, $750. Is what it costs oh. for Steve Harvey. Okay. To send. But you would you would be willing to spend $1,000 to have Steve Harvey record a video for you? No. Oh, okay. okay. No. No. All right. Up next, Chris Tucker. Do you know who Chris Tucker is? Not a clue. Okay. Do you remember the Rush Hour movies? Chris Tucker, Jackie Chan. Uh, he's the fast-talking gentleman yes. that is not Jackie Chan. Okay, so here's Chris Tucker. Preston, what's up, man? This is Chris Tucker. Congratulations, man. How much does it cost for a Chris Tucker cameo? Well, if it was seven fifty for a Steve Harvey, and I know who he is, then for Chris Tucker, I'm going to go five twenty-five. Ooh, just a little high, little high on the cameo high low, five hundred dollars. I'm going to give oh, that. It's going to go. That's, that's that's really close, Mom. Really close. Okay. Are you familiar with Flavor Flav? Uh, is it a chef? <laughs> <laughs> that might be the funniest thing that's ever been said on this show. No, he's not a chef. <laughs> he is half a... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> <laughs> that went, oh, my goodness. I should pitch that to him, though. That would be amazing. Flavor Flav, you need a cooking show. My mom thinks you're a chef. No, Flavor Flav is the guy with the clock from Public Enemy. So here's, here's Flavor Flav. Hey, yo, check one, two. This is Flavor Flav in a building. Yeah. How much do you think it costs for Flavor Flav to do a cameo? I was thinking Bobby Flay. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> okay, um, Flavor Flav. Um, cameo. Well, we're going we're going down in prices, so I'll go 
four and a quarter. No, 400. So close. So close. Oh, well, I, well, I should quit throwing in those quarters, yeah, shouldn't I? Yeah. Um, uh, Kenny G, you know who that is. Oh, Kenny G, yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, here's hey, Kenny. Catherine, Kenny G here. Hey, surprise, but you know, JP and AC reached out to me. They want you to know that Cleveland is for families. Oh, yeah, busting out the clarinet there on that one as well. How much does it cost for a cameo from Kenny G? See, now, Kenny G, if I had the disposable income, I would pay $1,000 for that. However, okay. however, since the trend has been down, um, no, I'm just going to guess 1000 because if I had it, I would. <laughs> you would pay $1,000 for Kenny G. Uh, 295 295 Correct answer for Kenny G. Well, I wouldn't have gotten two ninety five anyway. I would have said three hundred, <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> what is Flavor Flav a cook? Good God! All right, uh, coming up, uh, we're going to talk uh, concerts. It is uh, Family Friday on the Joe Show in Stevens Point. I would guess the Youpers. Was that your first concert, the Youpers? <laughs> I'm not sure the Youpers existed then. But, 30, uh, 30 point buck? <laughs> Rusty old Chevrolet? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Gary Puckett in the Union Gap. Played Stevens Point? Holy yes. cow. Okay. Yes. Gary yes. Puckett in the Union Gap. What were what was the song you were hoping to hear? Uh, young Girl. Young Girl, you're breaking my heart. That one, right? That one, yeah. Did he save it for the end? I don't recall. Okay. That was, that was like 50 years ago, so my memory is a bit fuzzy. Oh. <laughs> and and was, it, was it everything that you had hoped for and more? Yeah, it was fabulous. Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. It was yeah. great. It's Steven, how many people were at the show? I'm very curious about this now, because Stevens Point, not a big town. No, it's College Town. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to I was going to school in Wausau. <clears throat> excuse me, in Wausau, Wisconsin, and and Stevens Point has a four year university, which Wausau didn't. I was at the technical school, and so they had concerts over there. And Gary Puckett Name Gap was very popular at the time, and yeah, uh, as far as how many people, I mean, the auditorium was obviously full. Oh yeah, because I, I mean, it's Gary Puckett. Gary Puckett in the Union Gap. Did you try and go backstage, do like a meet and greet or anything like that? No. No? Okay. Did you buy a shirt? Did they sell shirts at that concert? Uh, no. If they did, I didn't I didn't uh, get one. Did you buy uh, a record? <laughs> I had a, a record of his. He did? Okay. Still have it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the first concert that I went to. Um... Because I think Teddy Bear Band uh, playing in Heights was probably the first concert I ever went to. But, like, inside an arena was probably uh, Anthrax at Roy Wilkins Auditorium in St. Paul. Mm. Was the first All one. Right. It was me and Eric and Eric's dad, uh, Dan. And he embarrassed uh -huh. us so bad when we were buying tickets because he kept asking for seats in the dining car at the ticket window. <laughs> You know, and we got our black T-shirts and our steel-toed boots, and you know we're all like ready to go to a heavy metal show. And then you got Dan. Yeah, I need two. I need two for the dining car. And we're like, Dan, stop it. Stop. It's Amtrak, not Amtrak. Stop it, Dan. Oh, that's good. That is good. All right. Well, hey, mom. Thank you for being on this morning. Uh, it's going to put a wrap on a family Friday here on the Joe Show. You're welcome. All right. Love you. Love you too.